talking to my wife. We were walking on one of the trails, and I told her, I said, you know, I think this is going to be really important. We really need to do something, or it's going to be gone. It was a brave vision. There were many, many obstacles. And from there, it blossomed into an organization that uh, has, has done a lot of good work for, uh, for the open space, and I think for, for children in general, and the, and the population here on the hill and beyond. Part of the, the value of what we're doing is to protect a resource that benefits us now and will benefit our children and grandchildren in the future. The mission of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy is to preserve land and restore habitat for the education and enjoyment of all. Without restoration, we'll be losing some of the, the species like the California gnatcatcher and the cactus wren, and we also have a couple of butterflies that we restore for, the El Segundo blue butterfly and the Palos Verdes blue butterfly. There's something that resonates with me very deeply when I'm out in the open space. I find it very restorative, it's beautiful, the fresh air. I find it the best way to clear my mind. I try and walk every day on one of the preserves. It's the best possible way for me to start my day. When we first founded the Conservancy, the, we actually went to each of the cities on the peninsula, uh, gave a presentation to the city councils and said, uh, and I remember one particular case I gave, a, I was talking to the Rancho Palos Verdes City Council and one of the council members asked, uh, how much is it actually gonna cost to acquire this property? The city manager actually answered the question <laughs> and said, it's gonna cost millions. This is really, really expensive property. And so uh, the idea that we were actually gonna acquire property and you know put it aside and pur purchase it, uh, I think was uh, something that people really didn't believe at the beginning. We've worked for the past 25 years to assemble 1,600 acres of open space and the vision is that so people can come and enjoy these scenic lands, moments of solitude, that they're safe and secure environments for our plant and animal communities and that they're here for all of our futures, our grandchildren and beyond. If we destroy it, which is easy enough to do, we don't know how to replace it. We can't remake uh, any of these creatures once they're gone. Starting in seventh grade, I started volunteering with the Conservancy, and since then I've been researching there on carbon sequestration capabilities of the native plants, and I've also been starting a butterfly restoration project for the Palos Verdes Blue Butterfly. I think when I was in middle school, I really just wanted to experience the environment and to get out and to learn about the native habitat, and I've gained such a great appreciation for the native environment. Since we began keeping rec regularly consistent records of volunteer hours about nine years ago. We've had over 80,000 hours volunteered to the organization and over 50,000 of that is in habitat restoration. I'm the program manager for the third grade education program and uh, what that involves is uh, training our docents. We have uh, 15 docents that uh, belong to our organization. Uh, we've been handling this uh, third grade program on the peninsula for uh, 18 years and uh, I've been associated with it for the last 15 years plus. And uh, we've grown from uh, 10 schools on the peninsula to 23 schools now in the greater South Bay area. We average uh, every year about 2,000 kids now. One, one child, I remember, he, uh, uh, we were sampling the, uh, the fennel, the sweet fennel, and we, we tell the story about the Spaniards using fennel as part of their medicine chest and it, it tastes like black licorice. He was not one to like black licorice, so he asked me where the red licorice plant was. <laughs> you know, there's still such a long way I can go and so much more that I, I need to um, experience, but this is definitely a foundation for what I can be pursuing in the future. The local governments are extremely important in this, and it's really a team effort. Uh, you know, an organization like ours, we basically can bring a lot of volunteers in to help, but the local governments, um, you know, they have a lot of other powers that a group like ours would never have, such as enforcement issues and things like that. So it is a partnership, and it will always be. We have a commitment to our community, to ourselves, to uphold the conservation values of these lands. The conservation easements that we hold over these open spaces are written to run with the land in perpetuity. And that's a mighty long time. And that's why it's imperative that we, you know, that this 25th anniversary is an amazing celebration, but that there needs to be many more 25th anniversaries <laughs> in the future. <laughs> many, many more. Happy anniversary. Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, 25 years old, 2013. Happy 25th anniversary to the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, and we thank the community for their enormous support in allowing this to happen. Happy 25th anniversary to the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. I'd like to wish a happy birthday to the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy for 25 years of service on this peninsula. 
And a happy 25th anniversary to the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy and thanks for all the great work you've done. I want to wish the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy a happy 25th anniversary.